you're so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. The Movement for a People's Party, which much of the dumb dumb left has been promoting over the past year or two as an alternative to the two-party system, is currently in crisis mode after the leadership of uh, its leadership in Virginia basically quit as a result of the party major party members uh, essentially courting uh, anti-vax ideas and things like that, which is not surprising since basically most of the dumb dumb left has basically jumped on the anti-vax bandwagon and grift. So let's look at what happened. Uh, the entire Virginia People's Party leadership resigned yesterday for leadership choosing to side with anti-vaccine activists and white supremacy. Remember, this is, you know, the alternative to the political status quo in the U.S., uh, let's read some of what was said here. Um, yeah, so Nguyen's policy discussions are not what we have experienced in the National pa People's Party Slack workspace over the past several months. The workspace has been overrun by trolling from anti-vaccine act activists and conspiracy theorists who have made it impossible to have a reasoned and nuanced discussion about not only vaccine policy, but also other health interventions such as masks and social distancing. Those of us who have tried to inject scientific information or debunk misinformation have been shouted down and harassed repeatedly, occasionally by state People's Party leaders and members of the National People's Party leadership. Oh, these uh, CIA-funded shit libs. Uh, what do they know about, about science? This harassment has been a growing issue over the past several months. The management of the National Party has not only chosen to allow this harassment to continue unabated, but now multiple members of the coordinator circle have voiced agreement with the anti-mandate, anti-health intervention views of the anti-vax activists within the party. This has included statements this week in support of the Canadian Freedom Convoy, an astroturf movement organized by well-known white supremacist and far-right separatists, that has been condemned by labor organizations and First Nations leaders. Remember, this is the, the party of workers, uh, according to them. Uh, but like Jimmy Dore once did when he slammed like Chicago School Union for promoting uh, further uh, remote learning, uh, they don't actually care about what unions say. Uh, this, is, this is all just the aesthetics of uh, class struggle when in fact they support every single thing that the far right does. So yeah, we cannot in good conscience continue to provide support to an organization whose leadership is choosing to side with anti-vaccine activists and white supremacists. We and other volunteers have provided ample warnings about the infiltration of right-wing anti-vaccine ideology within the party, and these warnings have gone unheeded. So they resigned from the state executive committee. Uh, remember, this is this is the path that every single one in the dum dum left has taken over the past year, you know. And the warning shot was the hysteria revolving force the vote and the kind of cultism that generated that particular incident. And since then, it's been basically, you know, a train with no brakes heading to the far right. That's what it has been. Uh, and you look at, for example, Jimmy Dore's content on YouTube nowadays, there is no left-wing uh, ideas being promoted. It's basically just a date, an anti-vax channel over and over and over. An anti-vax and pro-Joe Rogan channel. Um, and, you know, this is... Obviously, I would, you know, if, if I had joined a movement like this, a party like this, with hopes that it could... Uh, become a, a you know a viable alternative even even if it's just at the local or state level it doesn't have to I mean let's be honest a third party is not going to win a U.S. election anytime soon but at the very least have an alternative you know make a you know win win a couple of local elections uh, maybe even a state election, get some people elected to a state congress or something. That would have been, if I had joined a party like that with the hopes of building up uh, a bigger movement, I would be thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly pissed that they just jumped on this anti-vax grift. So, 
yeah, that is uh, that's pretty pretty damning. Um, yeah, and so this also comes at a time when they announced that they uh, had ballot access in Virginia, but apparently they don't. So I don't know why they've they've claimed that this is uh, true. There was also uh, they they revealed some of their uh, internal their their funding, which showed like twelve thousand dollars being given to one of their their most vocal members uh, for a list. <laughs> um, it's just this is a fraud. This movement is a fraud. This party, this non-party, is uh, an absolute fraud. And what happened in Virginia uh, apparently is spreading or has been spreading. This was in late, this was in late January. People's Party bombshell. Uh, Montana, Washington, Colorado, and New Jersey have withdrawn from their NOC process. I suppose NOC means uh, National Organizing Committee. Um, yeah. So what's left of this? Uh, what's left? Um, yeah, there was uh, also an earlier, this was back in, in August. I, I never made a video of this. Honestly, I, I really don't care about the People's Party. It's just so meaningless. Um, but I, I thought of doing a video at the time of this, but um, they uh, obviously, you know, being the, the, the major democratic party that they are, uh, you know, truly a People's Party, apparently they have their equivalent of superdelegates. So they have... 12 votes from their national organizing committee that, uh, you know, given that they had, so the explanation here is that at the time they probably had something like 60 or eight, was it eight? Oh, he said 60, but then he corrected it and said it was 80. So they had like 80 votes at the time of which 12 would be from the, the NOC. So that's a percentage that is similar to the number of superdelegates that the Democratic Party had. So even if they don't call them super delegates, uh, if you have uh, sort of the a, a central committee that has a number of votes in an election um, that they have for themselves uh, for no other reason that they're the central organizing the national organizing committee, that is basically a super delegate, right? Uh, there, there's no way around uh, aside from pure semantics, but that is what a super delegate is. So yeah, this party is a fraud. I think everyone who has uh, seen the antics of, of Nick Brana and all these other misfits who have, uh, you know, their their uh, their mass protests in front of the U.S. Capitol when like four people were there uh, with that other idiot, what's his name, uh, Jackson Hinkle. It's a fraud. It's a fraud. It's for a very stupid people who composes the bulk of the support base of the dumb dumb left as a whole or people and and you know some people are just stupid that that's a fact but others i think uh are just very desperate uh, for all the right reasons uh because politics in a country like the US not just the US in my country as well uh, politics does not respond to the needs of people especially working people especially people who you know are struggling income wise uh, who feel the the unfairness of the economic system and feel a sense of powerlessness that every idea that they've been taught about democracy in real life doesn't work because democracy has been captured by interest, by money, by capital. Uh, and you are powerless, <clears throat> powerless against that. And I feel that this degree of desperation drives a lot of people into believing the bullshit that parties like the... The MPP propose, and and that is that is a shame uh, because like, you know I, I don't have much respect for the for the stupid people who have who have blundered into this uh, this this wave of, of fraudulent pundits and fraudulent movements, but uh, I do feel bad for the people who, for all the right reasons, want to seek an alternative and they can't find it, um, and you know that the this is not a good thing. You would want. Uh, even if small parties uh, might not have a big shot, uh, it would be a good thing to have more of them, to have alternatives. But that just doesn't mean that you have to support uh, 
grifters like this, fraudsters like this, because that is what they're doing. They're basically taking people's donations. Uh, God knows what the hell they're spending it on, uh, not achieving their promises of eventually being offered in any ballot whatsoever. Uh, and just <clears throat> basically, it's a, it's a clown show on the inside from, from what you read about what goes on in this party on the inside. It's just very immature people who have no leadership skills whatsoever, um, virtue signaling and just grifting their way into pretending that they're a real party with real organizing ability, but they're not. So I think this settles the debate on what the MPP properly stands for. And certainly with its current leadership, with uh, misfits like Mick Brana uh, leading the charge, I don't think it'll be anything else than just a vehicle for grift because they're basically getting free propaganda from people like Jimmy Dore and people in that orbit. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what it is. So on that note, hope you have a good Sunday. If you like this video, please like, please share. Most importantly, please subscribe. Uh, kudos to anyone who watches this video instead of watching the Super Bowl, but uh, I'm going to watch the Super Bowl. And uh, I don't know who I'm going to root for because I'm kind of okay with both, with both of them winning. Uh, maybe Bengals. I'm going to root for the Bengals. So see you all next time.